In a previous video, we referred to being able to model drug administration and elimination. As the understanding of some key terms is important to understanding how drug dosages are designed, let's talk about pharmacokinetics. What is it? Simply put, pharmacokinetics is the term describing the change of a drug concentration or amount in the body over time. In an associated sheet, we'll provide key clinically relevant pharmacokinetic formulae, but here we'll, be, we'll try to help you understand the basis for these terms and formulae. Notice that there's no mention of the specific organs involved in drug metabolism and elimination, like the liver and kidney. All we are tracking with pharmacokinetics is the concentration of a drug measurable in the circulation and a model that focuses on the key parameters describing the concentration over time. So it is important to understand that pharmacokinetics and the terms are not strictly physiological processes, but really this mathematical sum of all the processes. So let's try to visualize the process as if it were a bucket with a hole in it, representing drug elimination. The faucet here is obviously delivering water to the bucket, but let's think about it as if it was delivering a drug. The water level is analogous to the drug concentration. As you start to add water to the bucket, the actual volume of fluid lost per time is going to be proportionate to the fluid level in the bucket. If you start with an empty bucket, the actual volume loss is small, but rises until the amount being added to the bucket equals the amount that is lost. So we can turn this bucket into a one compartment model, where the body's central compartment, that's the pharmacological term, which is usually considered the circulation where the drug concentration can be sampled, is called body. That's the single compartment. Drug can be added by a process called dosing by a variety of routes, for example, IV, intramuscular, or orally, either as a single dose, multiple intermittent doses, or as a constant rate infusion. The process is shown by the one directional arrow to the left of the box. Let's focus on drug administration to the one compartment first. Drug administration can be simulated by adding liquid as a bolus as a constant rate constant rate infusion is called CRI, or intermittently as repeated doses. The drug dose is the mass of drug, that is milligrams in this model, administered per dose. The drug dosage is the amount of drug administered per a given body weight, for example, milligram per kilogram in this model. Obviously, then, the drug dose equals the product of dosage and body weight. Although we were first thinking about an intravenous route of administration, for completeness, I'd like to mention now the term bioavailability, also called F, which is the fraction of a drug dose administered that reaches the circulation. For now, with IV dosing, we'll call that 1, or 100%. The interval is a time separation, in this case hours, between multiple drug doses. Another term we need to consider is called the volume of distribution, or VD. It is not really a physiological volume of the body, but rather is simply a proportionality constant between the drug dose and the drug concentration, or with each normalized to body weight. For the purposes of a one compartment model, we assume that a drug distributes outside of the circulation for all intents and purposes almost immediately. So volume distribution is an important variable to understand for a loading dose which is a drug dose you might give to rapidly target a specific drug concentration, such as with an antimicrobial when treating a serious sepsis. It is pretty simple. For an IV dose, the weight normalized loading dose in milligram per kilogram would be the product of the target concentration, say in milligrams per liter, times the body weight normalized uh, volume of distribution, such as out in, uh, stated in liters per kilogram. Understanding maintenance dosages are a bit more complicated as this dose is just designed to essentially replenish a drug concentration after elimination has occurred since the last administration. We'll reserve that discussion to another video, but suffice to say, they are dependent upon the following parameters of a drug. The drug dosage, the volume distribution, the half-life or elimination constant, which we'll talk about soon, and the time interval at which you administer a drug. Now let's turn our attention to drug elimination from the box. The vast majority of drugs are eliminated in the body through what we'll call first-order kinetics, 
you can think of the elimination process as one whose rate is proportional moment to moment to the concentration of the drug. Back to our analogy of a water bucket with a hole in the bottom, the liquid height for pressure would be analogous to the drug concentration and where the actual amount of drug eliminated per time would be the product of the liquid pressure and the cross-sectional air surface area of the hole. The surface area of the hole in the bucket would be proportionate to the rate constant of elimination or the proportion of drug eliminated per unit of time. This rate constant is also an inverse function of a term that's very useful called half-life. That is, the constant time constant, that is, that it takes for the concentration in the body to fall by 50%. So over time, the actual amount of liquid or drug lost per minute or hour would decline, but technically never reach zero. This is a particularly important concept in food animals, as understanding drug residues in meat and milk requires careful attention to drug half-lives and allowable limits of detection. The final pharmacokinetic term worth defining here is clearance, and that can be visualized as the plasma volume that is cleared of drug per unit of time, with units, for example, such as liters per hour or liters per kilogram per hour. In a one compartment model, it's also equivalent to the product of the elimination rate constant times the volume distribution. So what does the concentration of a drug look like when it's plotted out uh, using this one compartment model? The plot of a drug concentration against time would show an exponential curve with the concentration declining with time. Let's take a look. As it often is this difficult to accurately trace or even imagine an exponential line like we show here, a common mathematical strategy is to transform the drug concentration to the logarithm of the drug concentration. When the y-axis is changed into a logarithmic scale that we call, that we call a semi-logarithmic plot, the, tur the curve now turns into a nearly straight line, clearly demonstrating what is called the elimination phase. Let's take a look. Using a semi-log plot like this in a single compartment model, the approximation or assumption is that the drug distributes almost instantaneously into tissues, and extrapolation back to the concentration at time zero can be used to calculate the volume of distribution. For clinical pharmacokinetic approximations, a one compartment model is usually accurate enough. However, if you look carefully, with some drugs, two phases can be distinguished. Let's take a look at an example. So what do we see? An initial linear phase during which the plasma concentration steeply decreases, and then a second linear phase which is less steep. What's happening is that right after injection, the drug will remain mainly present in the plasma volume, but ra distributes rapidly into di different tissues, that is, the second compartment. The initial steep phase of the curve is called the distribution phase, as drug leaves the blood compartment and is distributed into tissues. The slower decline of the plasma concentration after this is associated with elimination of the drug from the body. In other words, it corresponds to the kinetics of drug elimination as in the single compartment model we've studied so far. We'll discuss later the concept of half-life that's, that's crucial um, for, to be because it di dictates how frequently we need to administer a drug regardless of the route of administration. Let's now take a look at our one compartment system when we administer the drug by constant rate, also known as constant rate infusion, or CRI. Going back to the bucket analogy would be just like turning on the faucet and leaving it on for a specific volume, rate, or time. So how does the system behave? Let's take a run. you can see that the drug concentration will rise until it reaches a what we call a steady state concentration. For all intents and purposes, it will reach this concentration in a time period of about what we call four half-lives. In this case, we are dealing with a four-kilogram dog, and the drug's half-life is four and a half hours. 
So you can see that, that a greater than 90% of the steady state concentration is achieved by about four half-lives, or about 18 hours. We'll come back to the actual concentration itself and how to target the CRI rate to achieve a specific concentration later. Now let's dial up the infusion by 50%. Now here we can compare the original infusion rate, the blue dotted line, with the solid purple line of the new rate of infusion that's 50% higher. The time to steady state stays the same because the drug and the species are still the same. However, the steady state concentration achieved is also about 50% higher. So a principle is that the concentration at steady state, or CSS, is proportional to the CRI rate. An important relationship in this system is that the steady state drug concentration, for example, milligrams per liter, is proportionate to the amount of drug administration rate, for example, milligram per kilogram per hour, and inversely proportional to the drug's clearance rate, in this case, in units of liters per kilogram per hour, which in the last simulation remain constant as we increase the dosage rate. Finally, as Turns out that if we stop the infusion, the drug concentration will decline exponentially just as if it was following the peak of a single IV dose which we showed earlier. So let's turn to intermittent dosing, but first address IV dosing in this situation. Using our bucket analogy, it is as if we turn the faucet on and off at a regular interval. As you might imagine, when a single drug dose is given by a non-IV route, there's a general delay in reaching a peak concentration as the drug is absorbed. Let's ignore the length of that delay for now, but certainly you can see that it would be relevant to the onset of action of a drug preparation. Let's focus on the dosage adjustment needed between IV and, say, oral administration. Clearly, delivering the same amount of drug to the circulation would require using a higher dosage of drug given orally. For example, if only two-thirds of a drug is absorbed from the GI tract to the circulation, that is, its bioavailability, or F, is 67%, it would require administration of 3 halves, or 1.5 times the amount of oral drug to achieve the same concentration as achieved by an IV dosing regimen. Regardless of the administration route, following absorption and distribution, the drug subject to first oral elimination will rise to a point where the amount of drug administered is equal to the amount of drug eliminated. That is, the steady state concentration we described before. In preparation for taking a look at what happens with intermittent dosing, uh, let's remind ourselves that with a constant rate infusion, the smooth curve approaches the steady state concentration, CSS, asymptotically. We were administering a constant rate infusion of 3 milligrams per kilogram per hour. Now, let's give the same amount of drug intermittently every six hours. So if we do the math, the single dose would be 18 milligrams given every six hours. So let's take a look. So we can see now that with the intermittent dosing, there will be a peak and trough concentration whose average will trace exactly along the CRI curve. The time to steady state, as long as it's the same species and drug, will remain the same. And if the same total daily dosage is, is given, the steady state average drug concentration will be the same also. So, with these principles in mind, we hope that you are better prepared to understand the way to use drug dosage and interval to target a specific range of drug concentrations for optimal therapeutic effect. In the next video, we'll use the one compartment model and these principles to better understand uh, the maintenance drug dosages, uh, in addition to reiterating what we learned about loading dosage. So in summary, pharmacokinetics is the term describing the change of a drug concentration or amount in the body over time. Although clearly affected by important drug metabolizing and elimination organs like the liver and kidney, there are no strict correlations between the physiological and pharmacokinetic compartments. A one-compartment model is adequate to describe most clinically relevant processes, 
where drug is administered into a single compartment, a central compartment, and distribution to tissues is considered instantaneous. Drug metabolism and excretion are lumped into a single term called elimination, characterized for most drugs by first order elimination, that is, drug loss per unit time, and it's the rate constant um, times the drug concentration in the central compartment at any given time. Key pharmacokinetic terms are then dose, dosage, bioavailability, interval, elimination rate constant, half-life, and clearance. The half-life of a drug or the time constant during which 50% of a dose is eliminated is inversely proportional to the elimination rate constant and is an important determinant of drug dosing intervals and in food animals for calculation of appropriate drug withdrawal times. With first order elimination, drug administration, regardless of route, will lead to the achievement of a steady state drug concentration when the amount of drug administered is equivalent to the amount of drug lost during the same period. And finally, the steady state drug concentration, for example, milligrams per liter, is proportionate to the amount of drug administration, for example, milligram per kilogram per hour, and inversely proportionate to the drug's clearance rate, for example, in liters per kilogram per hour.